Halo Infinite is going to have a day-night cycle. In the February development update by 343, they talk about how that has impacted the visuals and potential gameplay of Halo Infinite. And comparing the February development update with previous statements indicates that there are some gameplay mechanics at hand. And in this video, where I do a deep dive into all of it, so stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again, giving you another news and informational video when it comes to Halo. If you like these kind of videos, want to see some more content like this, make sure to tap that like button. If you want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo as we ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite, make sure you tap subscribe right there. So let's get right into the content. So as I mentioned at the top of this video that 343 mentions directly about the day night cycle that's going to be in Halo Infinite. Now we pretty much assume this as we saw throughout the gameplay reveal in July, showcasing how the time of day changed over the period of the gameplay, as well as various screenshots and video clips have showcased different time frames in the same locations. This is a drastic change when it comes to lighting and visual presentation within a Halo game. Previously, we've only had static lighting and what's called baked in lighting. Essentially, they texture items within the world because the time of day never changes. And so what you can do to save on resources and bump up the visual fidelity is actually make textures look like they have lighting on them when actually there's no light to be seen whatsoever. With Halo Infinite, 343 can't do those kind of shortcuts with a day-night cycle. Everything is in real time and shadowing and lighting has always been really intensive on a game engine. And 343 talks about this directly in the development update, talking about it as a visual standpoint and also a little bit about the Xbox as well. In the recent February development update, a developer here said, one of my favorite features in the game is our time of day lighting system that is active while you're playing the game. This has been one one of, if not the largest graphical feature implemented into our engine over the past few years. It allows us to create artistic scenes and settings that have vastly different visual tones and moods depending on which time during the cycle you encounter something. So coming across a mysterious forerunner obelisk during the day may feel peaceful and serene, where at night it might feel much more ominous and threatening. It really adds some incredible dynamically driven visual variety throughout the experience where we were not able to have it before. This was touched on in the now kind of famous Digital Foundry video doing a visual analysis of the gameplay demo showing how in low lighting, the textures and everything are look very flat and not very visually appealing, but in brighter lighting, it really showcases the texturing of different elements within the world and how lighting can make or break the visuals of the game. So it's not all about geometry and textures. It's also about how the light is shown on those geometry and textures to make it look really good. And judging from the screenshots that we saw in the development update, I think that they certainly improved on the visuals from what we saw in the gameplay demo. Though, keep in mind, everything that we've seen from Halo Infinite in-game has been on a PC. We haven't seen anything from consoles. A common concern within the community is saying that the original Xbox and also just the Xbox platform as a whole is actually holding back the visuals, but it doesn't really seem to be the case, stated here by 343, stating, in the same spirit, we've been regularly reviewing the Xbox version of Halo Infinite with our multiple partner teams. And while the work in progress images we are presenting today are captured on a PC, which we'll dive deeper on in a future blog post, we are committed to deliver a great experience and high level of visual fidelity across all platforms. Essentially what I think what they're trying to say is that we don't want this game to end up like Cyberpunk where it looks amazing and plays well, rather well on PC, but on the consoles, well, it's a different story. And since Halo is a, essentially an Xbox title, I would assume that the Xbox platforms should run rather well what kind of concessions they'll make on the visual fidelity to make sure that the game can run properly on lower hardware on the consoles compared to PC. I mean, we'll just have to wait and see. So yes, technical jargon all the way and yeah, graphics look amazing now and stuff like that, but why do day and night cycle in Halo Infinite? Is it just to make the world more immersive? Well, probably a little bit because having a dynamic lighting system will certainly give you a much more immersive kind of experience that this world is in a live, real kind of place. But I think that 343 is going to do much more than just having the cycle of time of day going through. I think what they're going to try to do is implement some gameplay mechanics 
as well when it comes to the world of Zeta Halo during the day and during the night. And it's also hinted at a little bit with one of the screenshots they recently shared. So to showcase some of the day night cycle and how the visuals of that look, well, they actually shared screenshots of a day night cycle within Halo Infinite, which is fantastic. But I wanted to point out something very specific here so we can see the daytime versions right here. It just looks like a beautiful landscape. I want to go there and play on it all day long. And if you kind of scroll down a little bit, you can kind of see some of the other cycled images right here as well. Okay, so just how the lighting and change changes have been made over the years. Actually, I think with this screenshot right here in particular, matches the gameplay demo much more. And you can see how there's like this ambient fog that's been added to help kind of make things pop out a little bit more and seem less flat. Though this screenshot in particular, I think really showcases what the potential of day versus night gameplay elements might actually change. Cause you look at this, you're like, yeah, it's the structure thing at night, looks great. But actually when you zoom in on this picture, you actually kind of see there are some coveys or banished, I guess in this case, for you to probably take on. So does this mean that there'll be kind of patrols that will kind of come in and out during the day and night time? So kind of just add some variance to the gameplay in some way or another. Now, if you look at the screenshot of the missions that are in your mini map, tack map, I guess you want to call it in Halo Infinite, you can see these red squares and blue squares kind of showcasing objectives and your bases and things like that within Zeta Halo. But there isn't any kind of mention of these gameplay mechanics like Joseph Staten specifically mentioned in the December update and then reiterated in the February update. The quote here is saying, Do I explore off the Golden Path? Assault that banished war base guarding the Valley Pass? Follow a flight of Forerunner Sentinels into an unexpected cavern? Rescue a squad of Marines dug in and desperate halfway up that mountain? Or do I keep pulling the mainline story thread that feels epic and intimate at the exact same time? To me, this gives off the impression that there's going to be kind of random events that will happen on your way to a mission, one of those red hexagonal kind of objectives that you saw on the tag map. This makes me feel like this will kind of give you much more organic, natural kind of feeling parts of Zeta Halo that will just kind of happen. And it's up to you whether or not you want to go about doing it. So what would the day night cycle have to do with this style of gameplay? Well, I think they actually kind of hinted at this with the reveal of Jega Rudumni, who is an elite headhunter that is part of the Banish. You can see like his red sword, this really cool art style right there from the, one of the Cannon Father articles that were written about this character and specifically, and this is gonna be a character that we will see in gameplay, but it seems like he's part of what's called the Silent Shadow, which is kind of an elite spec ops groups of elites that are part of the Banished now. And I think they mentioned something specifically within that development update that has implications to the D-Night cycle and gameplay mechanics. It's stated here saying, a brand new character you might find lurking silently in the shadows at some point in the Halo Infinite campaign. Now what time of day typically has shadows that you can kind of be hidden in? Well, during the nighttime, obviously. So could we see something like Jaga's Silent Shadow crew become much more of a threat during the evening and night times while on Zeta Halo. That's very possible. That's speculation on my point, kind of, but I'm trying to connect the dots a little bit here so you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about, how I feel like having a day-night cycle within Halo Infinite is going to be much more than just what the lighting looks like. I think there's going to be gameplay elements tied to it, the day-night cycle as well. So they like, Kind of like with Minecraft, right? Where you have creepers and all those bad guys, they come in at night, but during the day, it's a lot more peaceful and more straightforward. It's gonna be something that will hopefully affect your gameplay experience on Zeta Halo compared to say like Destiny 2, where it's really just the time of day just changes where in Halo Infinite, it looks like it might be gameplay related. So if you've been out of the loop of Halo for the last few days or so, or missed any content from me recently, check out the videos on the screen right here. I got a link to all my news and informational videos right there. So thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out.